Welcome to this video on stationary points, which is one of the biggest applications of differentiation, which you've already covered. So what is a stationary point? It's anywhere on a graph where the gradient is zero. And the easiest way to find that is that it's anywhere on a graph where it's flat. Okay. So if you had x squared, for instance, x squared is that sort of shape. We've got a negative gradient here, a positive gradient here, but at the very, very bottom there, it's not the best curve ever, the graph is flat. If I flip it upside down and do a minus x squared curve, we've got a positive gradient here where the graph is going up, negative this side, but again, at the very top, we've got a bit that's flat where the gradient is zero. When you've got um, more complicated graphs, so something like x cubed. Now x cubed, it could look like that, where it's never stationary. It's, I mean, in this case, it's always increasing. There's no stationary point, but it can also look like this, where it comes up, flattens out, and goes up again. So there is a stationary point there where the graph is flat, just for a sort of a minute part of the graph. You can also have graphs where they go up and down all over the place. So you can have graphs like that. Now this graph has got one, two, three, four stationary points on. It depends on the function or the equation itself. Usually it depends on the, the, the greatest power. So the, the more the power, generally the more stationary points you have. Why would you be interested in stationary points? Well, it could be that on a, on a graph, this is the maximum velocity that something reaches. If you've got a graph like this, this could be the low point on for a tide, the high tide and low tide. Okay, It could be the, the maximum force that an object is experiencing. They're usually the bits of a graph which we're most interested in because it gives us a maximum or a minimum amount. Okay, so there's three types of stationary point. We've got what's called a local minimum. So on a graph, now it doesn't mean that if I draw out the entire graph that this is the lowest that it ever goes, but for this section of the graph, it's the lowest point. There's nothing to say that if I carried this graph on, you see that it doesn't go down like that. So it's not the overall lowest bit of the graph but for the section I'm looking at it is. So we call it a local minimum. There's something called a local maximum, which is the highest point in that particular region of the graph. And then we've got what's called, I mean, the posh name is a stationary point of inflection, where it goes flat. It doesn't come back down, it just continues to rise. Or you can have it the other way around as well, where it comes down, flattens out, and then keeps going down. So either way around, but we tend to call them a saddle point anyway. Reason for that, if I keep drawing, look, there's a saddle on the horse. So a saddle point or a stationary point of inflection. Now you don't need to know too much about those for additional maths, but you will at A level. So how do you find a stationary point? Well, the definition of a stationary point is anywhere where the gradient is zero and the graph is flat. And remember that when we were differentiating, we said that the purpose of differentiation is to find the gradient at any given point of a graph. So really what we're saying is if the gradient needs to be zero and differentiating gives you the gradient, then to find a stationary point, it's anywhere where dy by dx equals zero. And there could be more than one of these on any curve. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two. You can have as many as three or four. It depends on how complex the function is. But to find a stationary point, you need to differentiate, get dy by dx, and then find places where your dy by dx is equal to zero. So when you're ready, keep going with the video and we'll do a couple of examples. So I've got four functions here, and all we're going to do is find the stationary point and give it as a coordinate. We're not going to look 
for now at whether it's a maximum or a minimum. That'll come a bit later on. So we need to find the place where dy by dx equals zero. So our first job for all of these is going to be to find dy by dx. Well, a little bit different on d because we've got brackets to get rid of first. Remember to differentiate, the power comes down and multiplies and then you drop the power. So this becomes 4x, 4x to the power of 1, but there's no need to write the power of 1. 4x, when you differentiate, it just becomes 4. And the minus 5, remember, is a constant that just disappears when you differentiate. So how do I find where dy by dx equals 0? Well, I take this function here, which is my dy by dx, and I put it equal to 0, and I solve it. So 4x plus 4 equals 0. Now that's nice, because that's a linear equation. I don't need to factorize or anything like that. So 4x would equal minus 4, and divided by 4x would equal minus 1. So there is a stationary point when x equals minus 1. Usually what we do then is substitute this value back in to find the y coordinate and then we can give the stationary point as a full coordinate. So if we put it back in, so y equals two lots of minus one squared plus four lots of minus one minus five. So minus one squared is one. So that gives us two minus four minus five. So that's minus seven. So the coordinate of the stationary point is minus 1, minus 7. And we give it as a coordinate that we could plot on a graph. So for the stationary point for A is that x is minus 1 and y is minus 7. Moving on to B, and you can pause the video and have a go at these yourself if you think you know what to do. You don't need to wait. Let's make this a bit smaller so I've got some more room. Again, we start by differentiating. So dy by dx. Now, the 3 comes down and multiplies, and we drop the power. So that becomes 3x squared. This becomes 6x, and minus 9x is just minus 9. And so we've got to find where that expression is equal to 0. Now, we've got a quadratic this time, so you've got some options. If you've got a calculator, you could use the quadratic formula. If you haven't, you'll have to factorise. So we're looking for a pair of numbers that multiplies to make minus 27 and adds to make 6, so we can split our middle term. A pair of numbers that multiplies to make minus 27 adds to make 6 is 9 and minus 3. So splitting our middle term, we've got plus 9x minus 3x minus 9 and then you split that in half and factorize both sides so 3x x plus 3 on this side we'll have to take the minus outside so minus 3 outside x plus 3 so we've got matching signs equals 0 which gives us 3x minus 3 in one bracket x plus 3 for the other bracket and we get two solutions this time. So x equals 3 over 3, which is so that's just 1, and for this one, minus 3. So this graph has two stationary points. It probably looks something like that. So we've got one stationary point when x is 1, and we've got one stationary point when x is minus 3. We need to turn them into coordinates by putting these two values back into the original equation. So I've got much room here. Let's see if I can squeeze this over a little bit. So when x is 1, we get y equals 1 cubed plus 3 lots of 1 squared minus 9 lots of 1. So that's 1 plus 3, take away 9, so that's minus 5. So we've got 1 minus 5 as a coordinate. And then when x is minus 3, this will be a little bit trickier, but minus 3 cubed plus 3 lots of minus 3 squared 
minus 9 lots of minus 3. Just run out space there. That is a minus 3 in the bracket. So that's minus 27. Minus 3 squared is 9. And we've got 3 of those. So plus 27. And then we've got minus 9 lots of minus 3. So that's also plus 27. So that is just 27. So this coordinate is minus 3, 27. Okay, you must remember to go back and turn it into a coordinate once you've got your x values for where dy by dx equals 0. It's very messy. So we can shrink that down a bit out of the way. Mm, lost a little bit there, look. Okay. For C and D then, and please pause the video and have a go if you think you know what you're doing. Start by finding dy by dx. So that's going to be 3x squared minus 12. Now put that equal to 0 and solve it. Now this one's not a full quadratic. There's no x term in the middle. So this one you can solve in the sort of the ordinary way. So that means that 3x squared equals 12. Dividing by 3, you get x squared is 4. Where you'll have to be careful here is that there are actually two solutions to the square root of 4. x can equal 2 or x can equal minus 2. Now, GCSE, we're not always that fussy on you writing down the minus 1, but if you don't do it here, you're going to miss a stationary point altogether. So there's our two x coordinates. Now to find the y part of the coordinates, we sub back in. So y equals 2 cubed minus 12 lots of 2. So that's 8 take away 24, which is minus 16. So we've got 2 comma minus 16 for one of our stationary points. And for the other one, minus 2 cubed minus 12 lots of minus 2. Be careful with your signs. Minus 2 cubed is minus 8. Minus 12 times minus 2 is plus 24. So that gives us positive 16. So minus 2 and positive 16. There are our two stationary points. D is a little bit different. Because it's in brackets, to differentiate that, you're going to have to expand out your brackets. So written in full, it looks like that. If I expand the brackets and leave x where it is for a minute, that's going to give me x squared plus 2x plus 1. And if I include the x from outside, it becomes x cubed plus 2x squared plus an x. Now I can find dy by dx and put it equal to 0. So dy by dx is 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. To solve where that equals 0, now because this is a full quadratic, we're going to have to either use the formula or factorise. This one factorises, so I'm going to factorise. It's always good practice to factorise it anyway. So I'm looking for a pair of numbers that multiplies to make 3, adds to make 4, so that's 3 and 1. So then you split your middle term, so I'll put 3x, 1x and 1. Then you chop it down the middle and factorise each side. So we've got 3x brackets x plus 1 on that side and then a 1 because you've got to take something out x plus 1 gives us 3x plus 1 and x plus 1. And then solve each bracket equal to 0. So this one becomes minus 1 over 3 and this one is just minus 1. Now we've got to put those values back in to find the coordinate. Okay, I'm going to use a calculator for substituting that uh, minus third in because that's not going to be very pleasant. So our original equation, uh, I think I'll probably use this version. So we've got y equals minus a third cubed 
plus 2 lots of minus 1 third squared plus minus a third. So really that's going to be taken away. So let's have a look. Let's get a bracket. We've got minus 1 third and then close your bracket before you cube it. So cubed. Plus two lots, you'll need brackets again to put the minus one third in again. So minus a third, make sure you close your bracket before you square. Hang on, my calculator's not letting me type. There we go. Squared. Plus, and I'll put this in brackets as well because I've got to substitute in something else anyway. Minus one third and close that bracket and I got this is not very nice minus 0.15 rounded so as a coordinate it's minus a third comma minus 0.15 and that's rounded probably could have worked it out and left it as a fraction but I'm not too bothered about that at the minute and then for the other solution then be a bit easier because it's an actual whole number. So minus one cubed plus two lots of minus one squared plus minus one. So minus one cubed is minus one. Minus one squared goes positive and we've got two of them. So plus two take away one. So that is zero. So minus one zero is our second stationary point. And that's how you find the stationary point. So the hardest bit often is the actual solving for zero. The differentiating is reasonably straightforward as long as you remember you've got to differentiate. Then you probably need to factorize to get your x values. And then if your x values are not very nice, it can be a bit of a pain to sub back in. But you must substitute back into the original function then to get the y part of your coordinate.